Greetings, and thank you for being with us once again. So it is August. The year has gone by extremely fast. And uh, with that said, we will continue with our August lesson for this month. Before we get started, let's have a word of prayer, if you would, please. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this opportunity to continue to learn your word. Oh God, we, as we study, we see the things that happen in biblical times are still happening today. And one thing for sure, God, is that you are still here. Uh, you, you still are there to deliver us from all of these challenges that we may go through in our life. And for that, God, we say thank you. In your name I pray, amen. Okay, so August's emphasis is kingdom citizens, like Jacob, are being transformed into new creations. Kingdom citizens like Jacob are being transformed into new creations. And the thought of this month uh, is uh, this, tension builds as Jacob grows as a man. Things have changed now. He has now become a husband. He's a father. He's a son-in-law and a brother-in-law. And so Jacob no longer makes decisions that just affect him, you know, like a single person. Every decision affects his entire family. And so as kingdom citizens, if we will, be, if we will truly be transformed from earthly thinking to spiritual actions, then we, just like Jacob, must embrace the mantle of responsibility. And so uh, within that reading, I can see there's some words that kind of resonate with me. And um, one would be the last word, responsibility, and the other word would be transform. What heavy words those are um, in this lesson today. Um, as we go through our lesson, think of these words, compromise, united, reconciliation, and wrestling. Think of those words. And this is lesson 33. And the title of this lesson is Jacob's Transformational Encounter with God. And how many of you have had an encounter with God? Perhaps many of us can't even keep count of our encounters with God, but thank God for having them. So questions for you to ponder. What are some characteristics of encountering God in a new way? And so I, I came up with these as I was doing the research on this lesson. Some characteristics are internal experience, unique to each person. It involves the Holy Spirit. It's life changing. It can be felt and often leaves you breathless and speechless. Just a few characteristics of encountering God in a new way. The next question, in your mind, what does it mean to wrestle with God? Now, perhaps many of us will have different definitions. And so my definition is that it means to toss and turn through the night with him, with God. It means to lay before him, face down on my belly, and wail before him, asking him what he wants from me and being persistent in prayer. And at times, it means fasting. And the third question, <clears throat> with no chance of winning, why do we contend with the Almighty? I don't know. We know we're not going to win. We know God is going to be the ultimate person to help us through these trials and tribulations. And I just think because we just want to try things our own way. And for those of us that are Christians, we know better, but we seem to sometimes just want to try it our way first. And then we go to God and do it his way. The scripture lesson comes from Genesis 32, 22 through 32. And the title of this scripture lesson is Jacob Wrestles with God. Listen, if you will. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all of his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak, daybreak. So we know that it was nighttime when this occurred. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. 
Then the man said, let me go, for it is, it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Penuel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Penuel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites, they do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was, was touched near the tendon. So the question uh, we may consider is what's God's purpose for our trials? Why does God um, allow us to have trials and tribulations? And so think of this response. The purpose for the trials is for us to focus on him. The purpose of the trials is for us to focus on him. And there's a bigger question. What principles can we learn about God's purpose in our trials and how we should respond to them? So let's move on to the heart of the lesson, which is each Christian will meet God at an appointed time in a special place. This experience is life changing. So all of us will have an opportunity to meet God at different points in our lives, at different places in our lives, at special places in our lives, in order for us to make life changes. One crisis with Laban has been averted. This is the introduction to the lesson today. And there's another that looms ahead for Jacob with Esau. Remember, Jacob fleed from Esau and ended up in the land where his uncle Laban, uh, Laban lived. There he worked for Laban for seven years in hopes of securing Rachel as a wife. Laban deceives Esau, giving him Leah instead of Rachel, and just treated Esau so unfairly in other agreement situations. Time passed, and a covenant sealed the deal between Jacob and Laban so that there may be peace between them and their descendants. So Esau, he's back on the scene, and he is a new neighbor that is just over the Gilead horizon to the south. Esau was fiercely angry when we last met him in Genesis 28. In Genesis 28, Esau felt betrayed by Isaac, his dad, because Isaac blessed Jacob with the birthright. Are there still storm clouds in his heart and soul? I believe so. So I encourage you to read what I call the saga of Genesis 28, because just like the Bible story, life, life takes us through many twists and turns, many hills and valleys and many ups and downs. And Jacob's life is a classic example of this. Like Jacob, many of the negative effects in our lives have a direct correlation to our decisions. I remember as a child when something would happen, I would think in my mind that I'm not hurting that person. You know, it happened to me or when I was younger, it happened to me. So it has nothing to do with anybody else. But decisions that we make do affect people in our lives or other situations in our lives. So it's been 20 plus years, but Jacob must once again, he has to face Esau. And facing one's past can be difficult and it could be painful. Has there been a difficult situation that occurred as a child or a young adult that you have had to address at this age in your life as an adult, an older adult? So there are a few lessons we can learn from Jacob and Laban, and you can go back and ponder this or look this up. Um, so the few lessons are family can take advantage of you. Uh, the next lesson, listen to the warning signs. A bad decision can lead to 
a series of problems, not just one problem, but it goes on and on and on. The next lesson, God handles unfair treatment. And another lesson in this, set yourself up for success. So think about those. Go back and look them up. Those are a few lessons that we can learn from Jacob and uh, Laban in this situation that they had. Uh, our first point for our Bible study lesson today is kingdom citizens know that moving forward after years of turmoil is not easy. So the Bible says that night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. This has to be a step of faith. I read in my studies that Jacob was able to perhaps have time with God once he sent his family and possessions across the water. Jacob has no idea what the outcome will be, but his faith was a factor. And if you think about it, faith always causes us to move forward. There Jacob is traveling between two worlds, the issue with his uncle Laban behind him and the issue with Esau in front of him. It is interesting that the scripture says that night is, is it a metaphor for which Jacob is physically, spiritually, uh, and relationally dealing with? Is that a metaphor for that? Life gets dark at times, and we all have experienced that. And if not, just keep on living. Jehoshaphat said, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Second Chronicles 20, 12 uh, says, we must... We must trust God to fight our battles. And when we trust that God will fight our battles, it means we do not have to create plots. We do not have to be anxious or be discouraged when bad things happen in our lives. What's important is that after, you first, after your first trial of life and God steps in, you become more confident and you become more convinced and knowing that if he helped you overcome the first time, he definitely would sure do it again. The reality is when it seems a situation is hopeless or the matter is um, at hand, is too overwhelming, too much for us to, to deal with, we may be tempted to doubt God. Uh, you know, we may want God to answer right then. Like Jacob, we must remember that no problem is beyond the scope of God's sovereign care for his children. He has promised to take care of us. He knows the plans he has for us. He has the plans for us to prosper and not fail. And he loves us beyond measure. In what area of your life do you need to move forward? in spite of the challenges you face. So I'm thinking that part of the answer to this question is that perhaps you or I have to be the one to take the first step in moving forward because most situations involve people or relationships. So somebody has to step forward. And the question is, will that be you or will that be me in our situations? Let's move on to point two. Kingdom citizens battle physically and spiritually before getting a breakthrough. Now, this eventful night continues. So Jacob was left alone. When a man or woman does serious business with the Lord, it's normally just him or her and God. Jacob has come to a crossroad. He's now ready to forsake his old ways. He wants to forget the old ways. And a man wrestled with him all night long until daybreak. In other words, he had a restless night. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. He's like, man, I've, I've wrestled all night long and, and now I see the sun coming up. I see daybreak. 
But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And Jacob had to know that there was something supernatural about this opponent. Jacob has now reached a breaking point. He's no longer able nor willing to journey without the Lord. Is this night struggle? Is this night's struggle indicative of Jacob's life? Has he not only struggled with men and women, but he has also struggled now with God? <clears throat> Excuse me. Transformation, that word transformation, takes us from a before Christ to an after Christ experience. Just reflect on your before Christ and after Christ experiences. Because of this night, because of this intimate experience with God, Jacob is no longer seeking the blessings of man, of humans. He now wants the blessings of God. And with the inner struggle and the outer strength, Jacob finally acknowledges that he needs more than what he is currently ex experiencing. His confession is this, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He has already received the blessings of his father, Isaac, and he has received a blessing of sorts from Laban, his father-in-law, but he needed more. When a man, a woman, boy or girl reaches this juncture in their life, only God can satisfy. So God blessed Jacob and changes his name to Israel, meaning he struggles with God. What in life might cause a person to pray the kind of prayer that was prayed in this point too by Jacob? Let's move on to point three. Kingdom citizens like Jacob know that an encounter of this magnitude changes everything. Three words that resonate from this encounter is conviction, conversion, and a brand new life. The man asks Jacob, what's your name? Why ask this question? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and you have overcome. The man said to Jacob, you will no longer be who you were. That life is over. You've done that, been there, perhaps have a few T-shirts for it. Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. You are no longer a deceiver. You are now the one who struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Genesis 35, 10 reiterates this. So you will no longer be what I say, the drug addict, the alcoholic, a cussing sailor. People will remember you as such, but God, you have overcome all of the addictions, all of the diseases and distractors that keep you away from God. The Apostle Paul said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creature has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Jacob is now ready to live as a man of God. And whenever this happens, it changes everything. Who were you before you fully and utterly committed yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Finally, Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. Jacob received what he asked for. What did God do to finally get your attention? How many nights do you have to wrestle? How many days do we have to go before we listen to what God is telling us? What a lesson. So this, this lesson reminds me of the soap operas that my mom used to watch. And um, I will say this in closing. As the world turns by this guiding light, so do the days of our lives. Whatever happened in biblical times, it is still happening now. God has an answer for us. God has not left us. He's allowed these trials and tribulations to come our way, but he's also, he also wants us to lean on him, to draw closer to him, to spend more time with him. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for such a lesson that reminds us that, yes, we will wrestle in life. We will have trials and tribulations. But the same God that's been there for Jacob is the same God that's here for us. And so, God, as we go through, we pray that we will be transformed um, as new creatures so that we will do what's required of us here on earth and also have a testimony for those that we, we will need to share our experiences with. You're an awesome God, and for that, God, we say thank you. Thank you again for being with us and hope to see you soon. As the world turns.